So let's do a live cooking session. Yeah. Let's say I am somebody who's working on a product like Apollo.io, which is a B2B SaaS for sales teams. It was most recently valued at two and a half billion dollars. Let's say I want to prototype paid booking links. So it has a meeting schedule, very similar to Google Calendar's meeting scheduler or Calendly's meeting scheduler, but they want to make it paid, kind of like intro or square pay space. Can you walk us through that? Yeah, for sure. I'll go ahead and share my screen and we'll walk through it. And I have nothing prepared for today. Actually, we're going to start from the very beginning and kind of walk through uh, from from the back on how this is going to work. Cool. So let's go ahead and take a look at Apollo first. I have the, the page pulled up here. So this is what we're looking at, right? Uh, we have our, our meeting scheduler and then we have the ability to kind of pop into here and edit and set some preferences. And Kind of what I'm imagining here is that somewhere we have a UI element for setting the price. And then later on, when we're looking at like the preview for this booking page, we can actually see, you know, set that price or I guess agree to it and then pay for the for the meeting. Is that kind of what you were thinking? Exactly. Those are the two most important things. Capturing the user input when they're setting up the meeting and then when somebody's booking, being able to pay. Cool. So we'll go ahead and start just with this screen here. We're going to use a couple of techniques kind of throughout, kind of explain what I did and why I did it afterwards, just because Bolt is going to take some time to, to build as we're talking. First thing I'm going to do is actually just take a screenshot. So I'm just using the built-in screenshot tool here, grab that and hop over into Bolt. And Bolt is one of many different tools. So there's, you know, Replit and, and Lovable and V. It's one that I like uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, one of them is that it's pretty customizable. So you can kind of set up different ways of using Bolt with different configurations. And so I have Bolt set up the way that I like to use it. But for now, we'll just go ahead and get started here. And I'm actually going to start with uh, I kind of an outline of, of a plan uh, rather than getting into the code, which is the first kind of major difference in, in the approach that most people might take rather than being like, hey, can you build this for me? Uh, I'm going to ask it to create a plan for me and just generally describe what we're doing. So give me a second to just type that out. And of course, you can ask a question as I'm doing that uh, if you want, but uh, I'm going to kind of focus here and type that out for a second. Okay. So here's what we have here. Uh, let's build a prototype of this app. It's a meeting scheduler that allows the admin to create more than one meeting booking link. It should allow admins to edit with the detail page. And later we'll be able to see a preview and I asked it to create a plan and not write any code. And what we can see here uh, that Bolt actually returns first is a PRD, right? So again, this is a, a pretty big difference from kind of our, our normal workflow or maybe what you'd intuitively think you want to do here. Uh, but basically what this PRD is doing is it's describing not only uh, what we're going to build, but also how we're going to build it. So we can see the admin user workflows, the end user workflows here. And then we have this admin dashboard. We have our different, you know, phases to our, for our workflow. And then a breakdown of the different phases of phase one, phase two, phase three. We have our design system based on the screenshot. You know, we have spacing, fonts, components, and then some success metrics and additional notes. Nice. And we didn't even tell it necessarily to create a PRD. Yeah. So this is part of the configuration that I have set up um, with Bolt is some kind of custom instructions to create a PRD first. I find that creating a PRD gives us something that we can reference back to. And so we can kind of just keep telling Bolt, yes, continue, you know, keep building new features. And we don't have to try to maintain the context in the chat. Well, I guess one kind of quick tip here is that the chat isn't the best at maintaining context for very, very long projects. And so having a file like this one, uh, like a PRD, kind of helps you maintain that context over time. It's something you can reference back to. Love it. PRDs are still valuable. And this looks a little bit different. Obviously, this isn't what I would normally think about as a PRD, right? We have like styling and some other stuff in here that's pretty specific, but it helps guide uh, our overall implementation. So we'll go ahead and kick off. We'll say uh, continue with phase one and hopefully we get uh, some implementation rolling here. So kind of while it's working on this, I'll just describe generally the approach here. So the first thing is to just break up these projects or these prototypes into components. Uh, if you try to just do the whole thing in one message, like build me this entire prototype, usually what's gonna happen is it's gonna fall apart pretty quick. And so you wanna break it up into basically as small of chunks as you can, you know, within reason. And again, the nice part about this approach is that we already have that first step and now we just have to continue with our additional steps. So really we don't have much here in terms of the content, but we're gonna continue. One thing that I do wanna ask Bolt to do here though, is to actually try to match the design more closely before we continue. And this is a process that I call reflection, which is just you know giving it an opportunity to think about what it's done and then improve on that as we go along. Another quick tip is just asking it not to write any code. This basically allows you to take a look at the results first prior to it actually implementing those changes which can be really nice if you want to make a change, right? Because you can see it's identified a lot of differences. Maybe there's something in here that I don't actually want to change. So I could remove that prior to continuing. Whereas if I just asked it to make these changes, it would have kind of gone on without me uh, and made the changes and I would have had to either revert them or, or try to undo something uh, kind of as we went. And I think the undo isn't that great. Yeah, so the undo is going to undo like that whole last step, right? So let's say we implement something that has a bunch of things in it, like a bunch of styling changes or adds a bunch of components. 
we try to undo, it's going to undo a big chunk rather than, you know, again, if we wanted all of this, except for we didn't want this toggle switch, for example, we could just say, okay, yes, implement that, but don't include the toggle switch. And we're a lot more precise with what we're doing by taking this approach. So yeah, now Bolt is basically working on the design changes to make the, the design match the screenshot more closely. You can see it's updating our layout and then uh, we'll have an updated design. We have, you know, some new components here as well that are being created. And this is just going to split up the files to something that's a little bit more easy to maintain or is more readable for Bolt. And, uh, you know, for a PM, you're probably not thinking too much about the structure of the code in your prototype. And I would agree that that's not super important, but there's general patterns that you want to see. And this is a good pattern. We don't just have one massive file, but we have a couple of small files. Again, it just makes it easier for Bolt to kind of maintain context. And so this is our second iteration. And I mean, it's a massive difference from the first iteration. It looks pretty similar wow. to, to Apollo at this point, right? It literally looks like Apollo. Yeah, so pretty cool. So we have our first uh, step kind of done here. And I think the next step is to work on the detail page. So I'm going to hit, um, well, maybe we'll add this edit first. So I'll grab a quick screenshot of this as well, just to provide that context to Bolt. Out of this, in terms of working up with mock-ups or working with an existing product really helps it catch up quickly. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if you want it to look like something you already have, you know, including those mock-ups is, is a, a big deal, but obviously like you can get very specific styling almost one-to-one -one with what you have. And so for the purpose of prototyping, uh, really like it's going to feel similar to your users or to your internal stakeholders. So we'll continue on with that small feature. And then I think we'll implement the detail view uh, after that. What's amazing here is like, we've basically already done like two steps, two pages <laughs> this quickly. Yeah, we're doing pretty good so far. Um, so this is actually, a, we're still updating actually. I thought we had a little issue there, uh, but this is a kind of a, I guess a quirk of Bolt. Sometimes it'll show you the preview before it's actually done updating. So you just got to pay attention to the left side here, look for the, the check mark, and then we'll know that everything is good to go. Um, so it's still updating our code here. All right, we'll give that a try. And we can see that we have our edit. Uh, again, almost looks identical, <laughs> which is pretty cool in terms of the uh, the output here. And so now we'll continue on with our detail page. So we'll include a screenshot once again and ask it to include a detail page. So behind the hood here is some really good like ability to take a image and then screenshot specific elements and reuse them. Yeah, I think behind the scenes, they're using uh, Sonnet 3.5 from Anthropic. They have some public blog posts with Anthropic. Um, so it's basically Claude uh, behind the scenes that's actually doing all the programming here for us. And Claude is a multimodal um, model, right? So it can it can both write and, and see things. So that's kind of how it's working behind the scenes. All right, so we have our next step done here. Hopefully when we click edit, yeah, we pop into this view here. And I think we're good there. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is add in, uh, we don't obviously don't have all the settings, but hopefully that's okay. You know, I could basically continue this process of taking screenshots, but just for the sake of time, I don't think we'll, we'll add every uh, configuration that we have here. So we'll go ahead and add the price. And whenever I'm uncertain about like how it's going to work, sometimes I'll just say, how would you do this? Don't write any code. Just so I understand like what approach it's going to take. And, and one other thing is just generally, if there's a plan, it'll do a better job. So it's less likely to create any issues or, or bugs for us. It's an interesting quirk of LLMs, like forcing them to plan seems to help. Yeah. And I think we see that now with some of the reasoning models where like, it's basically built into the product, right? With, uh, you know, the new like deep seek and, and open AI models. Um, so it's an extra step for us to do it, but it still works just as well. And while Bolt's working on that. Uh, let me see how I actually find the, the preview here. There we go, preview. And I'll just double check that this new feature is working and then we'll work on the preview as well. All right, so here's our payment settings. So we have a little config here with toggle that we check off and then we can set our price. So let's say 50 bucks. Now uh, there's some kind of, this is a number inputs. Oh, there we go, it looks a lot better there, maybe 50. Around $50 works fine. And then we can save our changes. So everything works pretty decently there. We can see the price actually gets saved right on the front page. And yeah, so I think we have the admin side uh, done. Anything you'd changed so far? Wow. <laughs> I'm like, I can't even speak. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, obviously, compared to Figma, you know, um, maybe if you're, you're proficient at Figma, this you know, would be a little bit slower. But one of the cool things about this is that once you have this up and running, you can also continue to create copies. So the same way in Figma, like you don't have to redesign your product every time you open it. You don't have to restart from scratch. You could create a copy of this and then basically restart from that copy. So you don't have to redo the work every single time. Uh, but we'll go ahead and continue with the preview. So I'll ask Bolt to implement the preview. And again, you can see a lot of the similar approaches, right? So how would you do this? Don't write any code. It makes a plan for us in terms of the, the components it needs, how it's going to set up the basically the routing so that we can navigate between different pages and so on. And so once again, we can just say yes, and we'll get that implementation kicked off. 
And then uh, the last thing we'll need after the preview gets going is just adding in that payment processing on that preview. So maybe what we'll do is we'll just actually grab this uh, this view here with the select time so we can pick the time as well. And then we'll also at the same time add the pricing. I think we'd probably do that all in one, one request. How do you typically judge what's a good size of a single request? Yeah, so it kind of depends on the types of changes that are being made. So I think anytime you're introducing a new feature, like a new page, it's best to get like the minimum version of that page working and then add to it over time. Once you have like that minimum page, let's say like the preview page in this context, then, you know, something like the time selection plus a view for seeing the uh, the payment processing isn't like a huge change in my opinion. Like it's, it's just not that many changes to the actual files or components. So I think that's kind of reasonable. You could also break it up if you want to be more certain that it's going to work. And you know, there's a chance that it doesn't work. Generally it's like smaller is better, but uh, I'm also sometimes a little bit impatient and I try to patch things together where I can. All right. So before... Already so fast. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go to the preview. So there's our preview. Looks pretty decent. I'll say also, can you add payment information? Anything else that you want here? Does that sound good? It took us about 10 minutes or so to go from nothing to, to the functional prototype here. I'm, you know, maybe speaking a little bit ahead of, of where we'll land. I'll see if everything works out. Okay. But, uh, yeah, 10, 15 minutes, I think is pretty reasonable in terms of prototyping out a single feature. You know, obviously if you want to do something larger in scope, it takes a bit more time. But this is the type of thing that if you, even if you're a designer, it would take you longer than 10 minutes to design in Figma. Yeah, that's for sure.